I ain't even going to hold you guys with an intro this time. All I want you guys to do is smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, and hit the notification bell, and we good. I'm going to show you what to avoid when you're adding Pro EQ to your track. I'm specifically focusing on vocal tracks. Let's get right into it. Here's a snippet of what I got. This is no EQ. I do have wave effects. I got the wave tune. I got the uh, compressor gate. I got the CLA 76, the limiter from uh, Studio One, and I got this R comp from Wave. So everything except for EQ. Snippet. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. My niggas all faded. I'm out here with the Brody's going crazy. So many later. My and by the way, it does have the N word in it. So if you have to, you know what I'm saying? It's all love. So um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys the first thing you want to avoid. Avoid mixing, adding Pro EQ with your uh, music. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag it over. And I dragged it over to the bus. So now we can actually look at it. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. My niggas all faded. I like to uh, avoid mixing with the 12 octave. It's all up to you. I like the third octave. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. A lot more easier for me. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. My niggas all faded. What you want to avoid doing next is going to the extreme, doing too much highs, doing too much lows. And I'm talking about the gain. So here's the gain right here, these knobs right here, which turns everything up, turns everything down. So for example, if I were to turn up this low filter. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. So obviously not turning it all the way up, but even like this. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. Now I hear a lot more of my lows. I hear a lot of popping going on. And if I were to do the same thing over here. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. My niggas start, all faded. I'm out of you. It just creates filters and frequencies that, that just don't match. You know what I'm saying? So avoid going too low as well. Don't take out. All your stuff. Don't just try to cut, cut, cut. We popping bottles, yeah, Cause look what happens up. if I turn My up the game. I'm out here with the Brody's going crazy. That's not the way. That's not what you want to do. So, um, I like to turn on the high quality. I'm not sure if you guys saw me do that at first, but I like the high quality on. Um, and as you can see, what that did is adjusted this high shelf. So, um, just avoid going to the extreme doing any type of major gain, reduction, or adding. Another thing I see a lot is misplaced frequencies. You do not want to misplace your frequencies. And what I mean by that is each filter serves a purpose. It all has its own unique purpose. And it's it's labeled right here for you. So these are the high frequencies. Don't move it too far over here because it doesn't belong there. It's going to turn up your mids, the mid section of your voice. So. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. My niggas all faded. It creates too much of a, uh, it, it's it's bringing up the wrong frequencies, the wrong parts. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. This is where it belongs. And again, don't put too much up. We popping. Also, people need to avoid just keeping the shelf on six when you could change the shelf to 24, 12, or do just peaking, right? And then you have the high cut over here that you can shelf up or down or down, yeah, or down. Um, so if you need to shelf up, use the high frequency, all right? But avoid misplacing, just moving stuff everywhere like this. I've seen stuff that's been just all over the place and you wanna avoid being messy. You don't want your stuff just to look cute, you feel me? You want your stuff to sound, you wanna know what you're doing. So yeah, I just had to point that out there. Each frequency has its own purpose. Know what each purpose does. Avoid just putting stuff where you want to. Which brings me to my next mistake I want you guys to avoid. I used to do this a whole lot. Don't use unnecessary frequencies. Like, for example, I think right here I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frequency knobs that you can adjust here. And I don't want you guys to use all eight of them. You feel me? Unless you absolutely have to, use your highs, maybe your high mids a little bit. And then just kind of jump here, you know, use your cuts, know when you want to, you know, adjust your mids. Sometimes just leave this alone, turn it off, leave that alone, set that back at zero because it's fine. But you got to know that song. That's why it's important for you to solo your voice 
solo, make sure you don't hear no beat, no music, and make sure it's not other vocals going on in the back. Make sure it's just that track you're soloing. So uh, if you were to use, like this is a pretty cool, like for example, if I go to the uh, vocals and go to R&B, they only have a few right here cut filters that they're using. And this is a pretty good uh, preset for Pro EQ. So, but then you go to pop and you see, okay, they use a little more, they're doing a little bit more, but they're still staying in their frequency range. You don't see the blue way over here. You don't see the green way down here, right? You just see everything where it belongs. And that's because it's serving its own purpose. And so you got to understand that if you don't already, the lows are to the left, the mids are in the middle, and the highs are to the right. Your voice is just a spectrum, just a wave just being cut by these filters. Which my last mistake that I want you guys to avoid making, I do not want you guys to solely rely on these factory presets. What I mean by that is, okay, so for example, I'll play this. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. Okay, male pop, cool. All right, so let's unmute the beat and let's just play it. We popping bottles, yeah, baby, you know what's up. My niggas all faded. Cool, I like it. That's the best it's going to get. I'm not even going to try anything else. That's fine. That's what I mean. You need to make adjustments, but keep things where they're at in the parameters. So if you like the male pop uh, template, for example, like, I like the male R&B, but let's just say you're, you're mixing, no matter which preset you like, stay in the parameters of it and just do a little bit of tweaking of the volume up and down. You most likely like it because of the way they adjusted the frequency already and the cue already. And all you got to do is adjust the gain, you know what I'm saying, up or down, or sometimes do a little bit of adjusting, but not too much. Make sure you're going by your ear. Don't just use a preset and be like, yo, that's it, I'm done. Make sure you double check. Like I said, I like to add two Pro EQs. Um, I like the second one to clean up. Matter of fact, I like to do Pro EQs. I never double duplicate like you see here. I would leave this on default and uh, just make adjustments on it. Kind of just go by ear what I hear if it needs a little brightness. Um, order some <laughs> order some miscellaneous. Like here's a little clarity, a little more bass. So there's some presets for that too for cleaning up on the individual track. It is your recording, and it's your responsibility to make sure that that joint sound clean. I thank you guys for watching this video. I got more Studio One videos for you guys. Like I said already, if you guys find this video helpful, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell. More Studio One tutorials on the way.